Hey everyone, it's Dealer Destro back with another review video. Um, for this video, we are going to look at the 50th anniversary Sinister Allies 2-pack. And this is just a rehash of the 25th Iron Grenadier. And the, I want to say the 30th um, anniversary Cobra Viper. Which, I mean, is good. I mean, this is a classic 2-pack, right? Like, we had the same 2-pack offering in the 25th. Um... In the 25th line, except it wasn't, it wasn't this, you know, Viper with the correct forearms and whatnot. Um, it was just your standard run-of-the-mill 25th Viper. But nonetheless, uh, this this is a good uh, true builder two-pack, especially if you're a fan of the Iron Grenadiers, and if you're a fan of the standard infantry, or I guess what would later be standard infantry in the Cobra ranks, because um, you know the Cobra Troopers came before these guys. So we will go ahead and we will just get right into it. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So for this exercise, you're going to need one of these bad boys, you know, or you can always be like, you can always savagely just rip it off the, rip it off the packaging, right? But me, I like to take a little more of a precise touch. So what I do is I come under here where the tape is, and then I just slowly make my way forward. And for you, for you guys that do custom work, I know we've all had our fair share of um, X-Acto knife incidents. And hopefully I won't have one here today for this video. Okay, so there's that. Uh, you always want to make sure that you cut away or that your, you know, your appendages are out of the line in case you would slip. They're not in the line of being cut. Um, I mean, I've done some stupid stuff. Like I've actually watched myself cut myself when I'm when I'm doing custom work and whatnot. Like I'll actually watch as as it happens. Like it almost like it happens in slow mo. Yet it, it it just it happens anyway, regardless. So anyway, once you you know once you take your exacto knife to this tape here, this pretty much just hangs free, and then you can reach in here and and grab the goods. Like the hoarders that some of us are and then make sure you grab your your free floating bits and pieces as well for the file cards I don't really do anything too fancy I just come in here blade away and just take it down and then on the other side same thing just a quick and then these come right out and you're left with some nice you know empty packaging I hold on to this piece because I like I like the artwork um, the updated artwork, I should say. I think whoever is on po on on the artwork for this run is, has been on point so far. Um, so yeah, so that's all I have to say about the packaging there. Standard run of the mill fiftieth packaging, except the only differences are the artwork is actually included for the figures that come in said pack. All right, so starting off, oh of course, of course, of course, of course, it's on the international bit not a big deal though I'll just come in here take these out we will start as per the usual as soon as I can find oh there it was there it was okay so there's the English version for the Viper and here's the English version for the Iron Grenadier okay so for starters we'll hold that right there for a quick second now, feel free to pause if you want the backstory on this guy. I like the fact that in the backdrop, they got the Iron Grenadiers. I don't know what that is, like a watermark uh, backdrop on there. Um, I just noticed that, actually. For my international people, there's that. And there's that. And then there's that. those guys at the side same thing for the Cobra Viper there's that for my international folks there's that and then there's that and that 
please feel free to pause and get up, get caught up on your backstories if you haven't already. Again, these file cards are kind of bland. I mean, they've been bland for, for this run. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these guys out of their packaging here, get them stood up, and then we'll come back and we will talk business. All right, so here these guys are out of their packaging, and it goes without saying that the, the Viper kind of wins the loadout battle here. Um, you see they took kind of like the minimalist approach and just rehashed the 25th loadout, and then here they rehashed the 30th loadout. So, you know, having gotten that aside, we'll start with the Viper, I guess since he has the most stuff to talk about. Um, he comes with <laughs> a ton of accessories. Um, I mean, that's that's the whole loadout. So you get the same guns that he came with for his 30th outing. So you get this kind of automatic rifle with the drum, nice line work in there. Um, you get the same kind of silenced pistol with the, the buttstock and the scope mo uh, modified. Um, and again, even for as small of an accessory that is, you know, good good line work, good attention to detail. You get the same rifle that we've seen with the Baroness. And again, it has the, you know, the rail system, all the little, the little details in there. Um, so that is another good accessory. And you get a missile launcher. And again... What I like about this is that they could have rehashed like the missile launcher that they gave, I want to say, to the Steel Brigade, and they gave a different one, like a slightly different one to the uh, Cobra Officer, but they chose to, you know, kind of tweak this mold a little bit and, you know, add some stuff. So um, I like it. I like that they, again, I know I've been talking about the line work here, but I like that they do that, you know, regardless of whether or not they're going to, you know, they're going to do the weathered effects. Um, you know, I, I, I think the guys at Hasbro know that a lot of us like to, you know, take matters in our own hands, paint, whatever, do our own little accents. And I, I appreciate the fact that they pay atten the attention to those details. Because if, if you take a brush with some gunmetal and you just kind of lightly just go over this, it, it will really flush out all these details here. Or if you want to do like some weathering effect or maybe make it look dirty, you know. Again, it's, it's your Joe-verse. You play how you want. And last but not least, he has his traditional rifle that he comes with, that he's come come with since the vintage offering. This time they decided to kind of go with like a silver gray finish. And, uh, you know, it looks good. It's a good update. Um, so, yeah, I want to say same exact mold uh, as the 25th, except, you know, for that instead of off-white, they, like I said, they updated the coloring. And then last but not least here, we have a backpack with some pretty heavy detailing. You got two grenades painted on, and I'm, I'm telling you, the guys, or, or the team, I should say, that, that's working on this, I mean, yeah, maybe that Cobra symbol could have used a little dab of smidge of red there, but, I mean, you can get in here, if you're a customizer, that is, you can get in here, and you can, I mean, look at all those little I don't know how close my there we go. Look at all those little those little uh those little detailings in here. And I know this isn't a good practice, but I don't I don't have my other tool here. But look at look at these belt buckles, these straps. I mean the, the options here are limitless. Like you can do whatever you want with that backpack, paint wise. Um granted, again, for what these are, I don't know that I necessarily expect the team at Hasbro to fill that in for me. But again, I'm a guy that, you know, I like to do my own customs, whatever. So I I will at some point get around to making these whatever I want them to be. And that's the beauty of this. I mean, that is the absolute beauty of, you know, the figures in this scale. Um, so moving in, uh, taking a look at the Viper. It's the same exact uh, iteration as his 30th counterpart, I, I like that they broke. This is one of those few times where, yeah, we let the weapons kind of skimp by, but when it came to the figure, we didn't really skimp. And I appreciate that. 
So you got silver finish here, black finish on the goggles, silver finish for the lenses of the goggles. Um, the grenades have this, I'm not sure if these are cast in red, but they have this nice silver accent. You got your Cobra insignia, you got your straps. Um, raising up the arms and taking a look here, you got gray, red, um, more gray, more red, black, Cobra insignia. Uh, I'm gonna go with, these are probably molded in red. Just looking at kind of like the finish around the gloves here. But again, like this figure is broken up very well from head to toe. Silver accent, black, uh, black, black, black carried down into the actual sculpting. Whereas these are molded, they carried it down. They didn't have to, which is awesome. Boots, they do have some weathering. Um, and I like when they do that. Saves me a little bit of work. Um, but again, this is this figure this figure here is a prime example of what you expect from a modern era gi joe offering um and then we'll just i guess we'll, we'll briefly cover the articulation so forward range of motion he can sit in a vehicle no problems um i love that they got man this double knee joint works wonders for achieving whatever kind of crazy battle poses you want to get um, ankle articulation is your standard. It's not the updated one that we saw for the retaliation run, and, and that's that's okay. So arms get you up to there. If you want to go the anatomically correct route, if you want to get crazy with it, full 360, no problem. The elbows are a bit hindered, and that's just because of the sculpt. And that's not that's not that. That's not a problem for me anyway. It's not that big of a deal. And do I have, oh, whoops. My bad. Um, so this elbow, a little bit better than this one. And again, I'm thinking that's the, because of the sculpt. They did get a little touch and go here, but I think, you know, that's not a problem. You can exacto knife that off. I think what they did is they assembled the figure maybe and painted it, I don't, I don't know. Or maybe they put the piece on before it was dry, not, not sure how it goes, not sure how it goes, but this is definitely red plastic with the flesh tone painted over it because you can kind of see it bleeding through the joint there. Um, hands have the nice updated modern era uh, range of motion with the added point of articulation and I will, I will take that anytime you give it to me. Um, so same on that side too. So that is pretty much it for this guy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get the Grenadier back in frame here, and then we'll go ahead and talk about him. So I'll be right back. All right, so here's the Iron Grenadier. So we'll get down to this second half of business. Um, again, as I mentioned earlier, they did very much take the minimalist approach with him as compared to the Viper. So he comes with same Uzi that was offered for the 25th run. Again, good line work, good attention to detail. And then I, I have yet to figure out for the life of me like what or where or why this is packed in. I always remembered the vintage one coming with this and the sword, but maybe he did come with a um, a little blaster of sorts. I'm, I'm not sure, but that's that's what you get with the Grenadier as far as loadout. Um, and then popping in here, we'll take a closer look at the figure. So he does have a sword. Um, or a sword, if you follow that school of thought. And it's it's done very nice. You got nice color breakup here. They did go ahead and paint the blade. So some of these are a little sketchy or touch and go, if you will. Um, but not like nowhere near as bad as the Saw Viper. Or actually, maybe that might be, maybe that's gray plastic and then this is paint. These are painted on, I don't, I don't know. Needless to say though, it looks good. Um, so coming into the figure here, sorry, it's, I'm having trouble, I'm having trouble getting the elbows straight now here. Okay. So head is what you have come to expect from the updated iron grenadier mold. Um, you know, it looks, looks good for being an old mold. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't, um, I really don't see anything new here aside from the 25th and Maybe at the end we'll take a look at the 25th next to the these updated guys here. But um, so you got the red mask, um, gloss on the goggles, and then I think that's like a matte with a, maybe a, a gloss finish. 
the web gear looks good, line work looks good, and I'm, the, the reason that I'm talking about this is because the 50th run has had some problems as far as QC. I mean, you saw it in the Heat Viper video for those of y'all that watched that video. And I mean, you know, you guys, you guys already know, like quality has kind of done this. And now with, I think with this, I don't even know what run we're on in the 50th, third, third run, second or third run, they've stepped it back up and kind of, I'm thinking, took a step back to kind of level set on what we're used to seeing from G.I. Joe, as opposed to what we got for the for those flaky runs of the 50th. Um, and now we're now we're back to business, at least from what I'm seeing. Um, so yeah, um, so same sculpt as the battle armor Cobra Commander. Uh, nothing, nothing really new here. Uh, but they did, you know, they did fill in the red like they did with the old figures, the the belt, same exact offering, you got the plastic chain to attach to the belt, um, gold finish on the sheath as well. So this is, and I don't know if it's the same on the 25th, I just, uh, 25th POC, all of those eras, I really didn't look at like how good they stayed in the lines. So I'm sure I got some figures that are just bleh. Like it looks like, you know, my two year old son could have done a better job. Um, but, what I noticed here is the legs here, right? The sculpting at the top, I guess, of this, this the boot, maybe I'm, is what that is. I'm not sure, the armor or whatever. Um, so you see here how it has this mat with kind of a shiny finish, but then when you transition lower, it's darker and more glossy. And I don't know how well that's showing through on the camera, but just take my word for it. And it's funny because like, I never noticed these, these attentions to detail until I started talking about figures with you guys in these videos. Um, but it's, I like them. I like when they do stuff like that and I'm noticing more and more like there's stuff that I missed, uh, you know, as I'm making these, fi these videos for these older figures too. But I like this, I like how this kind of breaks it up and, and, and gives it like a, the, the transition is smooth. Um, and then red, Red on black. I mean, for for what this is, they did a fantastic job. I'm not even. I can't. I can't say too too much about that. Like, I can't give them too hard of a time because again, red is just one of those colors that are just bleh. Like, it gives me the heebie-jeebies when I got to work with it. Um, so anyway, so articulation wise, if you're going anatomically correct, this is all you'll get. If you want to do the crazy, you know, whatever you can get all the way around. The elbows are kind of hindered because of the the sculpt here of the the gauntlet and how it bumps up against the armor here and i mean we, we see that from time to time i mean we've seen that for a few figures and that's again we're talking four inch figures right with like 17 plus points of articulation i, I can't i can't knock them too hard for that so typical wrist articulation they don't have the updated um joint like the viper has and that's that's okay because again this is a this is a re-offering of what we got back in the 25th. Figure does incorporate the double knee joint. Um, you know, so I've seen some people display them without these and they've subbed out web gear or they've even like head swap, part swap, whatever. But if you use this figure as is, that's what you can expect to get. And yeah, you will bump into the sheath unless you do one of these numbers right here. Maybe, 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 maybe. maybe. All right, so if you do that, offers up a little bit of more clearance but then your, your belt buckle kind of will sit slightly off center. And me, I don't know, I don't know if you're like me and that your OCD, it drives you nuts. Like me, I don't, I don't care. Like that, that's how I, I like my guys right there. Um, ankle joint is the standard run of the mill. So nothing new there. They don't have the updated, uh, retaliation joint and that that's okay. So, so yeah, so there's not really much more to write home about this guy. So we'll get these guys geared up, uh, probably do some side-by-sides, and uh, come back with a final verdict. All right, so we're back, and this is a side-by-side. -side. Um, and two things, two things. 
one, man, I forgot how hard it was with these single peg Cobra stands. These things suck. I'm glad that they finally started doing Cobra stands the same way as the G.I. Joe stands, and I never quite understood that. Like the entire 25th run, it seems like all the Cobra fans got the short end of the stick because these stands only have one peg. Whereas every G every G.I. Joe stand from the dawn of since the dawn of the 25th, two pegs. So thank you for this. Um, second, second thing that I want to talk about here, and this is oof. So as you can see, there was a lot of complaints about this figure because of how the hands were. And I mean, he does look quite dainty next to his little, uh, next to his updated counterpart here. So that was a problem. Yeah, that, that was a problem. That much better. This problematic. Um, and again, they've, you see where they've taken uh, liberties with, let me see how my camera will do here. So you can see how they've taken liberties with updating the helmet, making the goggles part of the sculpt. All my 25th Vipers, I had to glue these suckers on because um, I'm just like, nah, I'm not, I'm not even going to go there with trying to keep track of all these. I'll just, I'll put them where they go and then that's, that's the end of it because they really serve no function for the figure. So... Yeah, kind of, I see what they were going for by having these removable, but again, dab of glue on the front, dab of glue on the back, pop that on, no looking back. And there's a rhyme. Um, so yeah, and you see how they updated the, the lower legs here too, because like you get nothing with these, these legs. I mean, this whole figure was just problematic. So anyway, so, and then we'll just take a look at these guys side to side real quick. So really same thing. I mean, they did have the, the, tra the nice transition with the gloss paint. Um, nothing really new though. Like it's the exact same. Maybe the maybe the red on this one's uh, more uh, dark than this one. I don't know how good that's showing through on the camera, but uh, they do look slightly different. This one seems to be a little more bright. Anyway, all that aside, um, should you get this two pack? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think if you're a true builder, it's a no-brainer. You can you get the you get the updated, more refined um, Viper tooling, and uh, I mean for for the price point, two figures, what are they coming out to now? Like eight eight fifty a piece, something like that. Eight seventy five a piece. I don't know, but yeah, to totally worth it if you're a Destro fan. If you're a fan of the the updated infantry for the Cobra, um, definitely worth your pickup. If you've at your quota, well, then, you know, um, you might have that occasional itch that needs scratching and this will, you know, this two pack will do it. So uh, that's that's all I got for these guys. Uh, appreciate you guys watching the video, tuning in. Thanks for your time. Till next time, we'll uh, catch you on the flip side. Take care.